we're going to pop. If you see a 1 and there's an x on the stack, pop that x off. You're matching up the 1's with the x's that represent the zeros that you pushed on before. Okay. Well, how do we finish this machine up? This machine doesn't have any accepting states. This machine doesn't do anything yet except push x's on a stack and then pop the x's off as it sees the 1's. What do you do next? OK. We need another state. That'll be the accepting state. How do we get to that state? If you, well, because almost, that's the right idea. If we saw 1 and it's already an empty stack, what does that mean? That means we, have, that we got too many 1's. So actually, a 1z should go to a dead state. Um, so it's going to be the empty string, z. And you're allowed to do this, too. You're allowed to leave the stack alone. You're allowed to do nothing. You're allowed to push, pop, and no, don't touch it. See, actually, technically, you're not allowed to leave it alone. Technically, if you want to leave something alone, you have to push something on it and then pop it off. So you just go from one state to another. I mean, technically, all you can do is push and pop. But, but it doesn't affect your ability to leave it alone. You can just add two states. So, so we might as well say you can leave it alone. So you can leave it alone, and then you, you accept. So yeah, just question. Arbitrary question, but if uh, the stack is empty, yeah, then we can't pop anything off. And the way to find out what's on there is that how do, how do we find out that it truly is empty? I mean, are, are you thinking of a particular string? And I guess I'm, I'm remembering when we uh, when <laughs> we were doing you know beta sim. Yeah, we had to like to look at something. Oh, no, that was only, n never mind, that was just to see the one below it. We had to pop and then look at it. But we can, uh, we can see what Yeah, you can just look at the stack, and, and, and if there's an empty symbol on top of me, there's nothing there. Right. Just no. That's OK. Does this mean that these things basically have to be non-deterministic to be useful? Oh, what a great question. That's an <laughs> excellent question. A really excellent question. No, it's really a good question. And for finite state machines, whenever we had an, an e-move that was automatically non-deterministic, mm -hmm. right? Because it meant that you had a choice to follow the real symbol you just read wherever it tells you to go, or to follow that e-move somewhere else and follow the symbol wherever it goes. And that means you had a real choice. All right. Now, in these kind of pushdown machines, the presence of an e-move does not necessarily imply that it's non-deterministic. So what does it mean to be non-deterministic? Intuitively, non-determinism means that you don't know what to do, that you have a choice. And an e-move in a finite state machine means that you have a choice. But an e-move here doesn't necessarily indicate that there's a choice. Because there's another piece of input that you have to combine with it before you can do anything. So on an e-move in a finite state machine, if I see nothing, I can always go down that arrow. But here, if I see nothing, I can't always go down this arrow. When can I go down this arrow? If I see nothing and the stack is empty. I'm not allowed to go down this arrow every single time. If I see a 1 and there's an x, I can do this pop. But if I see the empty string, I can't just do this pop because I feel like it, because there is no arrow empty x pop. If I put empty x pop on this loop, that would be a non-deterministic machine. Because then, seeing an x on the stack and not looking at any symbol, I could pop. Or seeing an x on the stack and seeing the 1, I could pop. It's two different choices. Yeah? How are we constrained from, say we had 0, 3, 1 to the 7, and we come in and we do, we pop our stack to empty, and then we just do an e-move over with the empty stack? Chris asked another good question. And this really picks on, on a technicality. But before I answer it, let me make sure everybody understands this. The definition of non-determinism for these pushdown machines is long and complex, but intuitively it's very simple. If you don't have a choice in your machine at any step, then it's deterministic. E-moves do not necessarily give you choices because they're combined with stack symbols. So if you have a unique input stack symbol for every choice, it's still deterministic. Here we have empty z, so that's still going to be deterministic because there is no other z combined with anything off this 
circle. If z combined with anything else off this circle, then it would be non-deterministic. Yeah, Don, I'll get to your question in a second. You had said that <coughs> if you had a 1 or, or an empty x or a 1z, I forget which one you use, that it would then be non-deterministic. Yes, if, if I put this in here, empty x pop, that's non-deterministic because when I'm sitting here and I'm staring at the ones, uh -huh. I can either read the one and pop, oh, or right. I can just pop as many as I want without reading the one. Okay. And that gives me two completely different computations for the exact same string. I forgot how the empty work for a second there. OK. Um, OK. Are <laughs> the implicit path to dead states, those are OK in the deterministic system? Like, you don't have to draw everything. Right. You assume that any arrows that aren't there are dead. Right. Right, but Chris asked a really, really good question, whose, the answer to which requires a technicality that I really don't want to get into because it, it, it gets away from the gist of what's going on. But I do want to deal with the question because it's a good question. What if I throw in 0, 3, 1 to the 7th into this machine? What actually happens? We push through the zeros. We got three x's on the stack. We start reading the ones. We start popping ones. We pop off three ones. Now, if we do pop off another one, we're going to crash. So that doesn't work. But after popping off three of them, we can read no symbol at all. Notice that the stack is empty. Go over here and accept. So, right, so at this point, right, at this point, then we still have more symbols on. And then we'd see a one, and then it would crash. OK, so, so it's in. in Right. It, it's, it's similar to what you had before, but it's a little tricky because here you can kind of eat things up on the stack or, or decide when you're going to jump off. But it's still deterministic. Okay. There are some technicalities with this distinction between non-determinism and determinism that if it really bugs you, and I don't mind if you do this, if it really bugs you and you don't like this empty string and you just want to know when you get to the end of the string, use like a pound sign for, uh, imagine there's a pound sign at the end of your input string. A special you know, terminating symbol, like a period at the end of a file, or a control uh, D, or whatever there is at the end of a file. Imagine that that comes at the end of your input, and you're looking for it. And in that way, I could replace this epsilon with a pound sign, and it would take away any of these funny issues. So that way, epsilon would be used for when you really want you know, kind of a random choice to go out, and pound sign would be used for when you hit the end. So if you want to do that, and epsilon bugs you, then you can do that. But there's, there's officially no problem with using epsilon here. It's OK. So do we have to have some state going out of the accept state uh, on ones or zeros? They're all dead. Do you but have to, draw to it keep in? this deterministic, don't we have to do that? No, they're all there. I just didn't draw them. Every combination of, of 1 and 0 with x and z is there, and they all go to dead states. But if you don't draw it, that makes it non-deterministic, doesn't it? Because it doesn't have arrows going out. Technically, right, right, right. In a deterministic machine, you assume the presence of every combination of input symbol. In this case, both the input tape and the stack tape. So just for convenience, because there's a lot of those, even for deterministic machines now, if we don't draw them in, we just assume that, that whatever ones I left out are there and go to a dead state. So I could draw them in if I want to. But it doesn't make it any less deterministic in, in practice. All right, everyone. Questions about this example? This is the simple exam simplest example there is. This is the 0 to the n, 1 to the n, the one we couldn't do for finite state machines. And now that we added a stack, boom, we can do it. You can put in symbol on stack. Yes. And in fact, the stack alphabet is as long as you want to make it, just like you can use you know, more than zeros and ones. If for your input, you can have x's and y's and z's and as many as you want. And you're supposed to specify what the stack alphabet is before you start. I should mention, actually, that if I restrict the stack alphabet to a single symbol, like if I said you couldn't use anything but an x, then you can't actually get all the non-deterministic pushdown machine power. It's not powerful enough. You have to allow a general stack alphabet. A stack with just one symbol is called a counter, because all it can do is count. Right? It can't do palindromes, for example, because it can't remember the pattern. It can only count. You need two counters to simulate a general stack. Yeah. So, so I could throw two single symbol stacks in here, and that would be the same as having one stack. So you need four counters to do a Turing machine. 